Hello class. So last week we were talking about the fact that the Earth's crust is broken up into different plates. And these different plates slowly slide and crash into each other and move apart and slide past one another. And they move at the rate in which our fingernails grow. So they're really, really, really slow. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the Earth's interior. So going deeper into the Earth and um, what we find at those different locations and what we call those different locations. All right, so we're mostly gonna focus on the Earth's crust. And the Earth's crust is the, the land that we stand on and like tens of miles deep into the Earth, okay? So let's get into this. So the Earth's crust is the solid, rigid outer shell of the Earth. And remember, if we were to cut an apple in half, the skin of the apple is similar to like the thickness, relatively speaking, the thickness of the Earth's crust. So the Earth's crust, although we, you know, we've never dug all the way through the crust into the Earth's mantle, um, it still is relatively thin compared to the rest of the Earth's interior. Okay, so the solid part of the Earth is called the lithosphere. Lith means rocks or solids, right? And sphere just means a round thing. So the solid outer part of the Earth is the lithosphere. Underneath that, which is what the plates, right? The Earth's crust, which is broken into plates, the plates slide around on this layer called the asthenosphere or the asthenosphere. So the asthenosphere is going to be where a lot of activity is happening, which is helping the process of plate tectonics, which really allows the plates to move and continents to drift. All right, so the asthenosphere is actually part of the upper mantle, um, and it's called the plastic mantle, which means that it's not quite solid, it's not quite liquid, it's more solid than it is liquid, but it's flexible. And that flexibility allows the plates to slide over it. Who remembers what this term is, where we see heat rising and then eventually it cools and sinks and rises and sinks? This is convection. So there's convection currents in Earth's mantle and mostly in Earth's asthenosphere. In reality, this diagram is not accurate. This isn't really what's happening. We would actually have a lot of little things happening up in the asthenosphere, this top upper part of the mantle, the plastic mantle. Um, and the lower mantle would be slower, more larger convection cells that happen over millions and millions of years. Okay, so let's keep, let's keep moving along. I want to talk about this a little bit. So if you look at these arrows here, you'll see that we have convection occurring in Earth's asthenosphere, which is called the plastic mantle. And it rises along these things called mid-ocean ridges. The one that we're going to learn about the most is the mid-Atlantic ridge which is just the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There's new rocks forming, which is actually causing the Atlantic Ocean to grow wider and wider and wider because North America and Africa were once touching. And now we're thousands of miles away from Africa, thanks to this convection in Earth's asthenosphere, okay? So to break this down even further, we talked about the lithosphere. The lith, lith means rocks. And the lithosphere is made up of solid materials. So the upper part of the mantle, the thin, thin upper part of the mantle, this little white area here between these bl this black crust line and the asthenosphere, this is going to be your rigid mantle, which is just kind of stuck and glued to the Earth's crust. On top of that is the crust, and this is what makes up the lithosphere. The mantle is made up of the rigid mantle, asthenosphere, and the stiff mantle, or the stiffer mantle. So this is what we were talking about, where we have these small convection currents in the asthenosphere that really are going to be driving, not true really, but we'll consider it for Earth science, high school Earth science. This is what's going to drive plate tectonics, drive continental drift. And then underneath that is going to be that stiff mantle, which is very rigid, but it still has some kind of convection occurring in it, although it's completely solid. All right? So... To go a little further into this, you're gonna to have to know this for one of the questions. The density of the continental crust is 2.7. The density of the oceanic crust is 3.0, which just means that since continental crust is less dense, it floats a little higher, which is why we're on continental crust and we're not underwater. 
Oceanic crust is a little more dense, so it sinks a little lower, low enough for water to pool on it, which we call an ocean. All right? Thank you for running around, Kat. Really appreciate it. So, if you uh, have any questions, please reach out to me. Try out the, uh, try out the Nearpod. I think you're going to be great.